Hello and welcome to this free mandolin lesson aimed at beginner and intermediate players on what is probably the topic that I get asked about most both through the comment forms and from students and that is of course tremolo. It's what the mandolin was originally designed for and hopefully at the end of the lesson when we discuss all the fundamentals you need we'll have something that sounds a bit like this. Everything we talk about in the next 10-12 minutes or so is included on a free PDF, although this is mainly a visual uh, free lesson because it's all about technique and how you hold it, which is very hard to describe on paper. But there are still some exercises in there we will be going through, so please do download that before we start. So in this lesson, I'm going to assume you've never tried tremolo before, or you've tried tremolo and couldn't do it, and that's our starting point from absolute ground zero. And we're going to do three fundamental techniques with lots of other things discussed in between to hopefully give you the confidence you need to give it a go. To start with, let's discuss the three most important techniques I think you need to consider when playing tremolo. Number one is what's happening. It's all happening in your right hand. So right hand positioning is very important. So when you're playing melody, normally most mandolin players, the back of their palm is resting back here on the bridge. And their wrist is doing all of the work. There are some mandolin players where the arm's doing all the work. They're absolutely great mandolin players, but most people, the wrist is doing the work here and touching here. When you tremolo, it's very hard for just your wrist to do that movement. So when I'm tremoloing, my arm starts to help out. So if I was to play just, just with the wrist and then tremolo, can you see the arm ever so slightly helps out? So there's melody, tremolo. So don't be afraid. I mean, it's going to be slightly different for everyone, but it's not necessarily the same technique that you use. It's not all wrist in tremolo. It's quite hard to stay relaxed. So allow that arm just to help. I'm still touching back here. That pressure point is still there. But the arm is allowed to subtly help out instead of just the wrist. Technique number two is what is happening with your plectrum or your pick if you're in America and what, how hard are you holding it and what angle are you hitting the strings. So first of all, you are not to hold your plectrum as though you're gripping it for dear life. You almost want the plectrum as though it's about to fall out. The amount of times during gigs I've thrown a plectrum across the stage and that's a good position to be in. That means you're holding it nice and soft and I will put in a close-up, but I like to say that the plectrum can move around when I'm playing. There's a lot of wiggle to that plectrum. I'm not gripping it, it's not a closed fist. It's a loose fist. And as you can see in the, the overdub here, there's definite give in that plectrum as I play. And then to go along with that, it's how relaxed you need to be in general. I'd just like to try a little exercise with you. I wanna play eighth notes, alternate eighth notes on the D string. But I want you, what I want you to do is play them as quietly as possible. And you play them quietly, not by ever so, not by weight, it's almost by relaxation. If you hold that plectrum nice and soft and let it move in your hand, you will get that quiet sound. And when you're playing quiet, everything's relaxed. The arms relaxed, the elbows relaxed, the shoulders relaxed, and the wrist is relaxed and you get a nicer tone from your mandolin. The opposite of that is if you are death gripping it, you get a very twangy sound, because what you've got, you've got a bit of plastic hitting a bit of metal, and everything we need to do on the mandolin needs to try and hide that fact. So if you're holding it soft, you're just caressing the metal rather than a blunt object hitting it. So just a very soft wrist, as quiet as you can. And then the final thing with your right hand and the, the pick hold is the slight angle. I'm not hitting the, the strings perpendicular or with the full face of the plectrum. My wrist, you can sort of see, my, my arm's at this angle and the mandolin's at this angle. 
So my pick, I'm more hitting with the edge of the plectrum than the face of the plectrum. And again, that's just taking away, that's reducing the amount of plastic that's hitting the string. And just give you, a, if I hit it straight on, you get a very sharp edge to your notes. It's on and off. We hit it with the edge. It's just a very soft sound. So make sure you're nice and soft in the right hand, nice and relaxed everywhere here. And soft here with an angle. We've not even tremoloed yet. That comes next. Technique number three is how fast you need to move that hand. And it's not as fast as you think. Everyone I've ever taught tremolo to thinks that tremolo is about moving your hand as fast as possible. Incorrect. We've, all, we've got two strings on the mandolin, so it wants to tremolo. All you need to do is move your hand ever so slightly faster than eighth, eighth notes. If I... That's quite so, one and two and three and four, and I'm not moving my wrist at all fast. And the arm's helping out, notice how the arm's helping out, nice and soft with that pick angle. So you don't need to worry about fitting as many notes as you can in into the gap given. It's, it's a soft, you can get away with quite a slow wrist movement. It will still sound like tremolo if you've got the other two techniques in. If you've got a soft hand, Soft plectrum, soft wrist. So when you start tremoloing, this is not a technique that you learn today and then it's done. It, as all things, it will take a few weeks of getting it right. And what normally happens when I've taught it to people is it doesn't start off very nice, so you tense up. And then when you tense up, it sounds worse. So you tense up even more. So you might you might miss it, it might not sound like tremolo, so, so that I could see the wrist tense up, and then it'll sound worse, and then the arm tenses up, and it ends up sounding like a stuttering machine gun or something. If you're hearing that, everything's too tense. What needs to happen is you go the opposite way, and just accept that it won't always sound great. So you start soft, and then you stay soft, it sounds nice, so you stay more relaxed. So it sounds nicer and then you, it's a spiral in the right direction. So when you're learning tremolo, just accept that it won't always sound great and just over time, the amount of times you play it right will increase. The answer to that question is quite simple. Wherever you want. There's no rules for tremolo. Italian mandolin players tend to tremolo a lot. Bluegrass mandolin players tend to tremolo a bit less, maybe just the long notes. It's completely up to you. Once you can tremolo, you can do whatever you like. So just as an example, the lovely tune, A Show Can Farewell. So at the moment, no tremolo. So you might start, okay, let's tremolo notes that are two beats or longer. Maybe you would do some of the other longer notes in that phrase. Still fine? Maybe if we have slightly more of the classical Italian style, you'd tremolo every note. Equally fine, equally correct, it's up to you. And now we've waffled on for far too long, let's talk some exercises, let's play some exercises. So they're on the sheet below, starting off with a D scale. You hear how slow that hand is moving and it still sounds like tremolo because I'm very relaxed, so let's try it together. Three and four and two, three, four, one, two, one, two. So 
just keep playing that round and round. Don't worry about playing it all perfectly. Worry more about staying relaxed. The next exercise just introduces two non-tremolo notes and then a tremolo. So it's on a down, so it's like this. Let's try that again. Three, four. I'm hoping tremolo doesn't seem like such a big task now. Everyone always thinks it's this big, mystical, unreachable mandolin thing. It's really not that, that difficult once you remember to stay relaxed. And then finally, just some alternate pick strokes before you tremolo, because coming in, in and out of tremolo is probably one of the harder elements to in it, so... Like that. So let's try that again. Together. Three and four and... Let's put everything we've done so far into a bit of context and in the PDF below, I've included Amazing Grace. So I'm just going to stick the metronome on just to make sure I stay in time so you can play along with me. And I haven't put any tremolo on the music because I would like you to choose what you tremolo so you can tremolo the whole thing. Or just the long notes. It's completely up to you. After two. And one, two. That's everything I wanted to talk about in this lesson. It's a very quick introduction into tremolo because that's all you need. I absolutely promise everyone I've ever showed this to, it's sort of like, oh, I see, it's not quite as, you know, unreachable as I first thought. Stay relaxed, don't worry about how quick you move your hand and just put it where you enjoy playing it. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. If you have any further questions, please do hit me up in the comment section below or get in touch at mandomike.com. We do these free lessons every month, so please hit like and subscribe and sign up at the mailing list over on the website, and we'll see you next month.